Hi, I'm Isabel from The Upcoming. Congratulations on the fantastic debut film. Um, it's a fairy tale like uplifting retelling of a British classic. Um, what inspired you to write this story, which is so timely, with the feminist movement shaking up the film industry today? Um, well, actually, the project came to me via Vice in America, and they wanted to make a, um, a live action Punch and Judy movie. And I think we were all on the same page that it had to be a sort of feminist retelling of the story, given the content and given the current um, climate. Although I did write the film about four years ago, so it was sort of pre me too, but it was important for all of us to bring Judy's character to the fore. Um, and do you think that it's, um, sh there should be more stories written from a female perspective? I think there should be lots of stories written from all perspectives, yeah. And I think that that, that that's starting to change as more um, female um, filmmakers and writers are starting to get better opportunities and find yeah. their voices. And just a general kind of emphasis on diversity, I think, yeah. is really important. Yeah, I agree. And how did you strike the balance between funny and dramatic elements when you were preparing for your role? I think it was like largely in the script from the beginning. That's what um, really drew me to the project. and just this really bizarre combo of um, really serious sort of drama and and really bizarre humour. So I just, I loved that. And it was, yeah, basically just in the script. It's very unique, isn't it? Mm. Um, and the film is a period piece, but the characters feel timeless. Was this a conscious decision to keep it kind of contemporary? Yeah, I mean, I knew I wanted um, to to set it within a historical context, but also break break rules all around that. And essentially, it's kind of a world building exercise to create a kind of no particular time or place. So it was never it was never going to be a sort of stuff, stuffy historically correct period piece. And if you look closely enough or or listen to, to dialogue, you see rules are broken all over the place. Mm. <laughs> And by the end of the film, Judy's created a, a huge change in her small community. Do you think this kind of grassroots activism is important today? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I feel like that's what makes it particularly timeless, this film. Um, I love the speech at the end about when Judy says that today the witch is me and I think you all know it might be you tomorrow. Um, I just felt like that. you see that everywhere, especially now, or probably all of the time um, in some version. Uh, so, yeah, I think that that's really important just to be aware of that kind of fear mongering. And uh, you both worked with many directors. What did you, Mira, bring to the set from your acting experience? Um, I guess I am always kind of, every time I work with a different director as an actor, I'm always thinking about what I do and don't like. Um, and so I try and kind of remember things that directors have done that feel um, interesting, inspiring to me. Um, and I try and kind of also remember things that I, that I don't enjoy mm -hmm. as, a, as an actor. And um, yeah, try and get a little toolkit together based on that. But I think you can only ever direct based on your own personal instincts so I don't think it ever works when you try and sort of you try and replicate someone's directorial style you have to kind of basically do what feels right from your from your instinctual heart and and Mia what do female directors and Mira in particular bring and why do we meet, need more of that um, I I think everyone's really different um, and I I I don't know I, I feel like we're more similar than we are um, uh, different in terms of like male and females but mm -hmm. um, I think uh, maybe just like a slight sensitivity a little bit more sensitive to the vulnerability that's um, required I guess to be an actor and the, the strange um, mix of I don't know yeah vulnerability and that, that uh, yeah I don't know that you have to kind of embody when you're acting it's kind of hard one, isn't it, as well? Because w I think I've certainly, and I'm sure you have worked with a lot of male directors who are also really sensitive. And, yeah. and like you say, there's actually not. Uh, I don't. I don't think um, mm. there's that greater difference. I think mm. uh, exactly what you said. That mm. there's actually more similarities than there are differences. So, yeah. yeah. You know. Interesting. Yeah. And uh, were there any particular highlights from from the process of the film? Oh, that you can remember any horse. <laughs> I mean, that was an oh, amazing yeah, horse. That, that horse was beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> it was, and it was quite a last minute find, I feel like. It yeah, was, we had this like, like different old horse. nag yeah. of a draft horse that looked like it was about to keel over and die, and I was like, oh, yeah. guys, I think we've got a problem. We need a new <laughs> horse. The most amazing oh, that horse was incredible. Horse. It was just like its whole. <laughs> Aura was like, Wah, you're yeah. incredible. <laughs> something so else in there, not just like horse horse. brain. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much for speaking with me Thanks. and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank, thank you. you. Very much. Yeah.